Hello and welcome to book 11 of the Odyssey. Uh, let's begin. So we start off with what the last book pretty much ended in, with Cersei giving them a wind to help them travel to the underworld. Woohoo, vacation time, but not really. Uh, and as they're sailing, they soon reach the river of ocean, which is like the boundary of the whole world. Basically, the Greeks believed that all of the world was surrounded by one big river, which was made of the ocean, I guess. And like that's like the boundary between the living and the dead. And they get there. And when they get there, Odysseus makes a trench and pours libations of honey, milk, wine and water in that order to the dead. Wow, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Um, He then sprinkles barley, as you do when you sacrifice to someone, and prays to the dead, promising to sacrifice to them when he returns to Ithaca. And he also makes a separate offering to Tiresias, just so he feels special, and also gives him the prophecy that he needs. Uh, then they sacrifice some sheep, and all of the dead come piling in, because goddamn do they love blood. They've been, oh, that's like crack to them, man. It's just, oh, they've been craving it. And obviously, seeing all these dead people come to him, Odysseus quite understandably gets a bit freaked out and stops him from approaching the trench by getting his sword out and waits until Tiresias comes but before this happens Elpinor comes up to him you know the guy in the, at the end of the last book who got so lit he fell off the roof and died he comes up to Odysseus and Odysseus is like Elpinor why are you here what happened I thought I thought you were on the ship and Elpinor's like yeah, man, I got a bit too lit back at Cersei's and uh, had a bit too many to drink and fell off the roof. It's my own fault, really. Although I would really appreciate it if you buried me because I don't want to stay here with all these dead people and I can't really pass on until you bury me. So it'd be very much appreciated if you could bury me. And Odysseus is like, yeah, sure thing, my dude. Fuck, I'm sorry. And he's like, it's chill. Then Odysseus sees his mother, Anticlea, in distance, which is like a huge shock to him because last time he saw her, she was alive and well. So seeing her dead, he's like, oh shit, that's happened while I was gone, I guess. Uh, but he can't go up to her yet because he needs to see Tiresias first. And right on cue, Tiresias approaches and is like, yo dude, I'm here to put, I'm here, please put down the sword so I can drink that sweet ass blood. And then he drinks that sweet ass blood and just chugs it down and then he's like listen dude i know you want a smooth journey but one god really hates your ass spoiler alert it's poseidon because you kind of pissed off his son and his son did kind of curse you and you're kind of a dumbass for not thinking that poseidon would have had some role in this but whatever what's not is done um but poseidon's gonna make your journey absolute hell but if you can make it a little bit easier by not eating the cattle on Thrinaki when you go to it, because you're going to go to it. Um, and the reason for this is because they belong to the sun god, and you don't really want to piss off another god, especially the sun god, because he's kind of one of the oldest gods and one of the more powerful, and we do need the sun, and he might freak out if you eat them. Spoiler alert. Uh, also, if you do that, then po Polyphemus's curse is definitely going to happen, like it wasn't before. And you're going to find trouble at home anyway, so try not to make things harder for yourself, if you can. Uh, also, you're going to have to kill the suitors who invaded your home when you get back. I know, such a horrible task. Uh, and then, But after you do that, you got to go where people don't season their goddamn food with salt and find someone who refers to the thing on your back as a winnowing fan. Don't ask questions, you'll know when it happens. Uh, and then you got to sacrifice to Poseidon. Don't ask me why you have to do all of these things. Just do it. Don't question me. I'm an oracle. Also, you're going to die at an old age. So, like, don't worry about death. You're going to live a long and happy life. Well, not happy, but happy enough. And then Odysseus is like, uh, thanks, man. But um, can't help but notice that my mum's over there. And she doesn't really seem to recognise me. Is there a way for me to change that? And Tiresias is like, listen... If you want anyone to talk to you truthfully or anything, you've got to let them drink the blood. That's just how it works down here. It's like crack. And if you give it to them, they're going to do anything you want. As long as it's just talking to you. That's all they can do. But they'll they'll talk to you if you give them the blood. And then Tiresias goes away and he lets his mother drink the blood. And she's like, Odysseus, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be back at home? Are you okay? How did you get to the underworld? You're still alive. 
and Odysseus is like, listen, stuff got complicated and I had to come here to speak to Tiresias to help me get home, don't ask why. Oh, but also, why are you here? How did you die? Also, do you know what's going down at home? Is my life okay? Is my kid okay? And Anticlea is like, listen, Penelope is still loyal to you. Don't worry about that. Your kingdom is still yours, technically. And Telemachus is just on a fun little road trip and is perfectly safe. Your dad, however, is living on his farm in poverty and is depressed because you've been away too long. Not to make you feel guilty or anything. And also, by the way, the you being away for so long kind of caused me heartbreak and I might have died from that so thanks for giving me depression and Odysseus is like oh my god I feel so bad and he tries to hug her three times and fails because she's a ghost a tale as old as time and he's like why can't I hug you and she's like I'm a ghost you dumbass you know this you're smart you should know you can't hug ghosts that's just kind of common knowledge and he's like oh shit true and then she goes away and Odysseus meets a number of women from Greek myth such as Tyro the mother of Peleus and Neleus Antiope and I don't know how to say her name but she's the mother of the founders of Thebes um Alcimene mother of Hercules Megare Hercules's first wife who he kills Epicaste Oedipus's mother fucking yikes Chloris Nestor's mother leader mother of Castor and Polydeuces, if it, if Medea, and a whole bunch of other women, which I can't be bothered to recount. You can read it for yourself, it's just another list. Uh, and then Odysseus stops the narrative, and is like, lads, I gotta sleep, I'm so tired. Like, I can't continue with this story. I am physically exhausted from all this stuff, both physically and emotionally, please let me sleep. And Arate is like, oh, um yeah sure um but guys don't we think we should let him stay longer so we can like prepare him more gifts and then maybe he'll tell us more of his story and alchemist is like oh yeah sure we can take you home like tomorrow so but we can take you home later so we can prepare more gifts and this is like okay yeah fine sure i probably would look better back, back at home if i came back with more gifts and alchemist is like exactly now please continue with the story please and this is like oh fine i guess it is kind of too early to go to bed so I'll continue with my story and he goes back to the narrative and then we get more ghost interactions and he is then approached by Agamemnon and Odysseus is like what you're dead too did you get killed by like a god or something because like you were unkillable in the Trojan war and Agamemnon is like now nah, my cousin and wife killed me when I got back they like conspired against my back and decided to kill me so they could rule the country and also for some reason my wife hates me because I may have killed our first daughter I don't get that and it was kind of shit because like, I can't believe my wife would betray me like that and kill me with an axe she's so unfaithful you're luck. you're lucky that your wife is so loyal to you and wouldn't kill you with an axe don't forget that also is my son okay and Odysseus is like bruh I've been lost this whole time how the fuck am I supposed to know how Orestes is doing and Agamemnon is like true that and then Achilles comes up and is like sup Odysseus you crazy dog you're up to your weird ass antics again like how the fuck did you come into Hades I'm not surprised that you did because you're crazy but how did you get up here man and Odysseus is like yeah I just need to see the oracle for some stuff because Cersei told me to do it to help me with my journey or something uh but why do you look so sad to be dead man we were all like we thought you'd have a real happy death because you died a glorious one and you're like favored by the gods and shit why are you so sad about it and achilles is like i don't know man i'd rather be a commoner than rule amongst these dead bitches it's real fucking depressing down here i don't really like it but uh hey how's my son doing just to change the topic and odysseus is like man i told you i haven't heard anything about your sons i've been lost but he was very good in the war and he loves fighting he was he was he was pretty chill with the whole thing he was really good at it and achilles is like that's chill and then ajax's turn comes and he kind of, but he doesn't really approach odysseus he kind of just stands there awkwardly in the distance just like staring at him angrily because Odysseus did kind of show him up before he died there's like a whole contest and shit you can read about it uh, and Odysseus looks at him and it's like bruh you're dead now why are you still mad you can't be holding grudges in your death as well like calm down just come and talk to me man we can sort it out but Ajax just kind of looks at him 
and then walks off because he's done. He's done with the Odysseus. He doesn't care. And Odysseus is like, ah, oh, okay then. Uh, then he sees some tragic figures who got punished in the underworld slash Hades. I don't know. Um, so he sees like King Minos, Titius, fun name, uh, Tantalus, and Sisyphus rolling up his rock. Love that. And he's like, wow, that's a warning if I've seen any. Uh, and then he spots Heracles and is like, oh my goodness, it's Heracles. Oh my god, I hope Heracles notices me. And um, Heracles does notice him while he's having the time of his afterlife, having banquets and stuff. And he spots him and he's like, yeah, Odysseus, my man, you're getting put through a rough time too. I've heard the gods have been going on all about it. I've heard from like Zeus and stuff that you got stranded for a long time on different islands. That sucks, dude. But hey, it gets better. Look what happened to me. I went through child labours and now I'm a god and having the time of my afterlife. Like, it gets better, man. Don't worry. And then Odysseus wants to see who else comes and he's like waiting there and he's like, oh, I wonder if I see any more interesting people. But then the dead kind of try and swarm him and he's like, ha, not having that and runs back to the ship and sails off like the only sensible action he's ever done. And that's the end of book 11 of the Odyssey, Underworld Edition. Uh, so tune in next time for the penultimate book of the Aeneid. And then book 12 of the Odyssey, where they come across Scylla and Charybdis, the sexy sisters. Although they're not that sexy. Woo! Okay then. Bye!